Hi, my name is Ben, and welcome again to the Canyon Country Discovery Center. We're here in our exhibit hall to show you another one of our favorite exhibits. Before we get to our exhibit today, we want to give you a brief history to give you a background of what's happening here. Um, and to do that, we need to bring you to space. One of the coolest things in space is that there is zero gravity. That force that holds you down to, down to Earth and gives you weight, that force doesn't exist. And some really funky things happen in space. If you take an object and you push it off into space, it'll continue to move the same speed and the same direction forever until another force works on it. Which is really cool, but also has some very interesting side effects. There's some really cool videos that you can look up of astronauts that have been put in the middle of a room and were left with no forces acting on them. Now these astronauts in zero gravity cannot move from that position. They can't move to the side of the room or up or down no matter how much they wiggle and move. And that's just the way that zero gravity works. There's no force. He can't generate a force to move himself if he's placed in the middle of a room. Now, take that idea for a second and let's apply it to some of the problems that they had as they were first trying to go to space. Back in the 50s, we had rockets that could make it to space, but we had a slight problem if we wanted a rocket to work in space. Rockets run on fuel. And this fuel, once you put it into zero gravity, stops being able to feed into the engine the way that it was when it was in gravity. This became a problem. And they developed several set of different solutions to try and figure out how to move their fuel reliably into the motors of rockets in zero gravity. One of the ways they, did, they discovered was ferrofluid, or magnetic fluid. It was developed and created for the first time ever in 1963. And the idea was that while gravity is not a force you can rely on in space, magnets are. Magnets work whether they're on Earth or in space. And you could use magnets on a magnetic fuel to push or pull them into a motor. And it was a really cool idea, however, it didn't work out and they had some easier solutions for um, using for getting fuel into rockets. However, uh, we've since found many different uses for ferrofluid. Many, many speakers use ferrofluid as a cooling substance to keep, uh, to keep speakers cool. Also, you have, you have ferrofluid in different computers, and sometimes they used them in the past in different medical equipment. And there's many ideas of how we could use ferrofluid in the future. It's a very exciting thing. And there's even a whole scientific study of magnetic fluids and the way they react. Now, to see this for yourselves, we have our ferrofluid display. So let's check that out right now. All right, welcome to our ferrofluid display. There's a few simple things going on here. We have a ferrofluid tray here in the middle, and we have a couple magnets, one on top, one on bottom, that you can move around and change things. Some of you may recognize this. Uh, we do have a slight, a small video of this on our Facebook page already. But let's show you a little bit about what happens when we move these magnets. So I'm gonna just use this upper magnet here, and I'm just gonna to begin to lower this. And as I begin to lower it, something magical, I should say more science-like, is gonna happen in our ferrofluid, and you can see that beginning to happen right now. What you see is the development of these peaks and valleys. Magnets have lines of force, and oftentimes, the things that they are attracted to, they, you can see these lines of force. Ferrofluid works the same way. These peaks are created where the lines of force of this magnet are interacting with the ferrofluid. The valleys are created because this ferrofluid is on Earth. We have gravity. Gravity is pulling down and these two forces are fighting. 
and the, along the lines of, of magnitude, our magnet is winning and creating peaks. And then the valleys, gravity is winning and pulling the fluid back down. As we, the magnet gets closer, its force increases. And eventually, our magnetic fluid here begins to defy gravity and move to this upper plate up here as the force of the magnet beats the force of gravity eventually. And you can see these giant, nice, meh, nicely formed peaks that slowly move in towards the middle as they're pulled up towards that magnet. It's really quite uh, cool to play with. And you can even see on the top plate, you can see that it still forms a peak and valley uh, formation, which is really cool, showing us all these different lines of force from the magnet. There is a bottom magnet. I'm going to let you guys play with that and see what happens when you play with both magnets at once. All right, that is our ferrofluid display. We can't wait for you guys to come and try it out for yourselves. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you guys next time.